You've probably heard the term jazz language before, but what is it? It's preconceived melodies that work over a certain chord progression. So not everything that a jazz musician plays is improvised, if you will. There's things that they play that they've played many, many times before, and they use the chords and the scales to connect those ideas. It's a little bit like having a sentence in jazz language is the nouns. It's kind of the point of where I'm trying to get. Uh, if you had a sentence with no nouns, it would become a little bit strange. I'll play the first four measures of Autumn Leaves, and this time I will play licks that I know. One, two, Actually, the first eight bars of Autumn Leaves. I couldn't help myself. But I played largely licks. I could have, I could play that exact same thing again if I wanted to. Um, so when I play, it's a combination of scales leading towards some kind of target note. That could be a chord tone. It could be the beginning of a lick. I use arpeggios. They usually come from the chords themselves. And licks, preconceived melodies that I've usually stolen from somebody great like Miles Davis or Sonny Rollins or Melissa Aldana. Another area very important to performance is sight reading and this is an area that's often neglected by younger players. But ask yourself if you show up on a gig and say it's a big band do you spend more time improvising or do you spend more time reading the music? It's very important that you're able to read music and sound authentic right away. The way to get better at sight reading is simply to do it. You can dumb down sight reading into two elements, pitch and rhythm. There's a really, really good book uh, that deals with jazz rhythm and it's called Modern Reading Text in 4-4 by Louis Belson. Uh, for the pitch aspect, I recommend going online and typing in transcriptions of various people. There's a lot of uh, players that have put up their transcriptions online. So if you say Charlie Parker transcription, you're going to get a lot of hits and you can simply just read those transcriptions. And the best part about it, you can see where it comes from and you can listen to it as well so that you know that you're playing it in an authentic manner. Another important building block and skill to develop is some piano chops. I've never met a good jazz musician or a good jazz musician that's not also pretty decent at playing the piano. But you're not going to learn it by playing a Mozart concerto. What you're going to do is just simply mess around on the piano. This is how most jazz musicians learn. And what they try to do is they try to learn chords on the piano. So we've been talking about the tune Autumn Leaves. I will play the first eight measures of Autumn Leaves on the piano. The first chord is a C minor 7. First you need to figure out where C is on the piano. And then the rest of the notes in the C minor chord. The internet is a great resource for this again. You can just type in what notes are in C minor 7. Maybe play a Charleston rhythm. F7. If you keep doing that, eventually you will start getting good at the chords. Once you feel like, hey, I, I know what notes are in each chord, try to move your hand in the smoothest fashion possible. This is called voice leading. So instead of jumping, and then jumping up to the F7, go what, where are the F7 notes, what's close to the C minor notes? Watch my hand. Next chord. Next chord. Next chord. Next chord. Next chord. Did 
you notice that I really didn't move my hand very much? This will transfer to your saxophone playing as well. This is what's called voice leading. One note wants to go to another. And it makes it sound very melodic and very smooth. As you mess around, you get better and better. from a teacher it's simply from messing around enough on the piano and I started like anybody else uh, where's the next note eventually you figure it out <laughs>